Vigados, let's, let's talk a little bit about what is happening here. Within the last hour, the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine on its website has started to urge all Americans in Ukraine to consider departing, departing now. <clears throat> Uh, within the last few minutes as well, the U.S. ambassador has arrived at the Russian foreign ministry uh, in Moscow. This according to TASS. What is your read of the situation? How should we assess what we're seeing on the ground and what's developing now? You know, under normal circumstances, that would send a very powerful and very worrisome <clears throat> signal that imminent uh, conventional war is about to, to start to take place. Uh, I, from my professional reading, I, I read that more as a, a hybrid response, uh, which Kremlin actions deserve from the United States and from the West, so as to try to rally support from Europeans uh, in, with a view to preempt any potential uh, aggressive actions from Russia vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine. But talking about that united support from Europeans, we understand from Bloomberg reporting overnight that Germany is looking for a potential energy exemption and any financial uh, related sanctions. How hard is it going to be to coalesce around an actual sanctions package, given how, more, how much more closely Europe is tied economically to Russia? Well, and that's exactly a vulnerability and weakness, which Kremlin has been, uh, you know, uh, pretty... Uh, pretty successful to, to, to manipulate and to drive uh, the wedge uh, between different uh, interest groups within Europe in particular and, and some member states. Of course, energy is, is the biggest reliant uh, sector for Russia, especially vis-a-vis -vis Germany. And that, I mean, you know, I mean, the fact that Nord, Nord Stream 2 continues to, to be constructed and soon to be operational is indeed, I mean, you know, it's a scandal uh, when it comes to the lack of uh, consistency of European Union policies, especially coming from Berlin. It's not just Germany, though many do perceive that Germany is the weak link here. Today, um, we, we saw a group of Italian CEOs from very large companies ignoring a warning from Rome, from Mario Draghi, and going ahead with a conference call with Vladimir Putin. What kind of signal does that send? <clears throat> well, you, you know... <laughs> uh, covering uh, business investment news from Bloomberg, you know that investors and businesses, I mean, uh, they, they make their own uh, risk assessment and, and, you know, and they take their own sovereign decisions. Russia is, of course, not China uh, in terms of the largest, soon to be largest market in the world. But Russia is still an attractive, uh, an attractive uh, market for many European companies. Not well, only European, but also American companies. So the businesses to make their own uh, assessment and the risk uh, to move forward. But that is going to be uh, more volatile than, than before. Well, Russia is not China, as you say, Ambassador. But at the same time, they are kind of pushing similar boundaries here in that China, it's more of an issue of Taiwan and the South China Sea. With Russia, it's Ukraine. What are these kind of Western adversaries seeing from the West that would indicate now is the right time to be pushing these boundaries? Well, I think when it comes to, uh, to, to Russia in particular, but also China, uh, what it matters is that we don't sound alarmist. Uh, we take, I mean, the signals seriously and we try to respond in a hybrid way, the same what Kremlin has started in 2014. Uh, I personally don't uh, believe that the conventional war, war is at stake. Uh, I think it's more about uh, negotiation tactics. In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very robust and provocative way, which will require to be the West, I mean, not only united, but also creative uh, in terms of de-escalation, but also sending reassurance messages to the Baltics and to the Poles by stationing more troops uh, and pursuing you know, commitments, which, I mean, the West made towards Ukraine and Georgia over NATO membership. And, you know, and maybe inviting Sweden and Finland more actively consider NATO membership while at the same time, you know, we have to be yep. uh, innovative and reach out beyond President Putin to the Russian people that they would see that the West is also open to Russia, but to different Russia, democratic, the one which respects uh, the rule of law, democracy and freedoms. Do you trust the French president <clears throat> not to do a deal that is not in the interests of the Baltic countries, Central and Eastern European countries? There is this fear that I keep hearing being voiced, that, that the French in particular are going to try and go over everybody's heads and do a deal which 
which doesn't satisfy and deal with the fears that many of these countries have vis-a-vis -vis Russia? You know, I, I was educated uh, in my, through my family history, which has undergone Soviet occupation and uh, deportation to Siberia. And that's what I like about Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. Having said this, uh, I'm sure that President Macron uh, fully understands and, and takes responsibility as one of the great European leaders uh, pushing uh, strategic uh, sovereignty of Europe uh, ahead that if Europe doesn't stand uh, to the shoulder to shoulder to other Europeans, uh, European Union, I mean, or France, I mean, Europe will never play a role. Europe will never be seriously considered. Uh, we need to have boots on the ground. We need to have a defense spending. We need to invest in defense industry so as to have a more sovereign and more equal role and uh, being a more reliable and stronger partner for the United States.